everyone. I thought I'd do an updated film on the film I did when I discussed about what kind of products are best to use whilst going through the menopause. It was a while ago I did it and I did it for a website called Health and Her and they wanted me to produce content for them in terms of what products to wear and it was a really successful film. Recently, probably sort of mid-lockdown about six months ago, um, I held a seminar on this particular subject, wearing makeup in the menopause. Now, it's obviously really, it sounds really, really unsexy and I don't want it to be because basically things change and we need to know what products to use to make this process just a little bit easier. And it's very simple, actually. It comes down to wearing long wear, water resistant, straight waterproof makeup, just due to the amount of heat in our body, the perspiration and the way that our skin changes as the estrogen drops in our skin so does our collagen so it's just having little treatments and if I can recommend one treatment which I do have twice a year usually in the autumn just after the summer is profilo I have injectable profilo must have it twice and that is really boosting um, the hydration in my skin but long term it's helping to regenerate the collagen in my skin um, I have vague vague perimenopausal symptoms. I'm not full-blown menopause. I have many friends that have had and I've researched this topic in depth and read a lot about it. So I do feel confident um, in talking to you about certain issues that go on with us. Some people get away with it scot-free, some really struggle. So I just thought I'd kind of go through a concise um, product evaluation on what would be good if you are in this scenario. Now, the first thing is primer. Um, SOS Primer by Clarins. This is one of the products I recommended. This isn't the actual one that I wanted to show you because it comes in different tones. This is the universal one because it's completely clear. But I really like the one that is slightly green. Um, as you know, green neutralizes any redness in your skin. And if you are prone to flushing or you just have, or your, maybe your rosacea is more inflamed or you just find that you are just a little bit more overheated and your complexion is far more pink than it ever used to be, then the Green SOS Primer from Clarins is a really, really good starting point, especially if maybe you don't even want to wear makeup. Um, maybe you've never worn foundation, but you just wanted your skin just to look a little bit calmer and a little bit more neutralized, then the green one is perfect, packed full of antioxidants, and smoothing agents, so now my skin feels really smooth, um, ready for an easy application of foundation, and that's basically what primers do. They perfect our skin, whether they're filling in the pores, boosting hydration, absorbing oil, so when we put our foundation on, it just makes the whole job easier. And prep is everything, and I think I've told you this so many times, I know I've told you so many times, it's when everyone's taken it in, it makes such a difference. Um, so that is a primer that I highly recommend um, and as I say I like the green one you'll see when you click the link that there are different options there's a lilac one too for brightening um, if you've got very pale skin and sometimes all of the Asian skins especially in winter um, tend to go a little bit greyish um, and the lilac helps to boost it so there's something for everyone right so as we get older, we have to be cautious on um, the bases that we wear. There are two schools of thought. You can wear something that's really super light to give yourself a glow if you're genetically blessed with great skin, and then you can kind of target the areas with um, an opaque concealer. I'm going to go in with the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. This is my favorite longwear foundation that gives a natural finish. Um, I'm going to go in with Stromboli first. This is the darkest shade. I'm just going to apply it with my Real Techniques brush. I literally can't stop using this brush. This is a sculpting brush. So as the season's changing, I'm finding I'm using more long wear products. Um, I do uh, use my fake tan when I'm working um, because I don't want to use it when I've got my mask. But at home, I just want to feel like my skin looks more even. I use a tiny, tiny amount of this and you can see it's perfected my skin really well. The thing I like about this, you can see with all my pigmentation and stuff, which I have quite a lot of, always this time of year. And as I talked about the Profilo, if you can get a little bit of lasering in, which again, I try to get a couple of sessions in if I can. I'm lucky because I know lots of people in the industry, but my favorite laser specialist, as you know, through my films is the incredible Debbie Thomas. And again, that really helps with boosting the collagen. And I just feel that 
if I can kind of dive through this chapter in my life with my skin just feeling as sort of voluminous and as bouncy as I can make it, then um, that hopefully should make me feel better about myself. Um, so I've pushed this well into my skin, which I'm not going to use a lighter shade. I'm going to keep myself a little bit of warmth. The other shade that I had was Punjab. Um, but yeah, that will be too light for me and I'm going to use the concealer around the rest of my face. So it's really lovely. So this is a long wear formula. So if you are going to have a hot sweat, um, flash or flush, depending on which word you like to use it, then you will perspire through this, but so long as you have a tissue to hand um, or a blotting paper, you can just take five minutes. Don't wipe the makeup away at all, just blot, and you will still have that coverage in your skin um, when you perspire. It won't completely remove it, but if you start wiping and go, whoa, whoa, then you will obviously remove it and you might get a bit of a stripy finish, but if you just dab through it, um, this is fantastic and as I say it's tried and tested. Um, I'm going to go in now with the Laura Mercier. This is the Flawless Fusion Concealer. Now like I said whether you go for a lighter base than I have, maybe you just go for a tinted moisturiser and then you go in to go and cover up all the pigmentation or kind of fine lines etc. Um, I just think there are two types of concealers that you need. You need an opaque one like this, just slightly lighter than your foundation. And then if you want to brighten up around your eyes but you don't want it to be too heavy, then something like a Clinique airbrush. I mean, I just think that's a great product. I've recommended it for years. It's got just, I'm not a fan of the YSL one, I don't know. It's just, I think I had a few ones, a couple of them started to smell and it put me off. And it's too pink. I know they've got new shades now, but you know when you just get something in your head. I just like the Clinique one. Um, airbrush concealer, and it's great around your eyes. Also, the By Terry Densilis is a good one around your eyes um, because that one contains a really nice serum. Um, but what I'm trying to do here is just perfect those areas um, that I need to conceal. Also, be careful just around the lips. And that's why this good firm foundation brush is brilliant because I just actually end up with sort of a limited amount of foundation on my skin, not too much. I've got a nice, punchy, hard-working product, and then I can buff it with that. I feel that it sort of almost disappears into my skin. Same routine, lots of concealer. I don't do the dabs and the dots around here because I don't like the concealer to sit in my eyes around there. I don't need that sort of level of lightening and brightening there. I actually just need it here where I'm dark, where most of us are dark. And if you find that you put your concealer on um, and it pinches your skin and dries your skin, I can highly recommend just dabbing on a little bit of hyaluronic, just pure hyaluronic, just be you know, the most inexpensive one. A film I did donkeys years ago now, just from The Ordinary, is a brilliant one. You don't need to spend a, a fortune, but if I'm at work and I feel like some faces just eat makeup. You can put so much makeup on and it just never reads as makeup. Some skins absorb a lot of makeup. I've never really understood why. Um, and then some skins you put the makeup on and it looks really obvious. It's more to do about exfoliation. Anyway, then I would just tap in a little bit of hyaluronic over that area and it brings the skin to life. So essentially the base I've put on, even though I look sort of quite made up, how it feels is light and it feels wearable. Now I'm not really talking about wearing masks or anything when we're in, I'm just talking about if you're going through this chapter in your life and you want to feel good but you know that you might have a massive hot flush and you're worried about the makeup coming off, then this is something that you can, as long as you dab, you can keep your skin just a little bit more even. Okay, so let's go on to eyes. Um, so Gimme Brow by Benefit is a massive favourite of mine. This is shade number two. There's lots of shades. Um, I recommend it for a lot of my friends who have got thinning eyebrows um, and when we've gone through chemo. It's a brilliant voluminous, it's a brilliant brow product to add volume to your brows. I like the Max Factor one, I like this one, I like the Anastasia brow. Um, and I'm just running this through my brow because one, if you do it first, you pick up any hairs that might have lost a bit of colour, going a little bit greyer, and it makes it easier to see your shape, 
I can just see I'm just picking these ones up backwards now and it just gives your brow a fuller shape because as we get older and our brows thin slightly when you go in with a heavy coal the texture of the coal on your skin is actually quite solid and hard um, and it doesn't look as natural so just be cautious try and pick up the hair or dye your hair whichever oh I've got my I got my just for men the other day and I still haven't done it I don't know why I'm procrastinating on all these things I know I'm going off on a tangent but you know there we go it's light brown this is the color that I've been using on my brows it's really great it's not red at all or gingery or it's not too dark so I've got so much blonde in the front of my hair I need to be cautious of that I'm just going to retouch my brow there because that's annoying me let's take a smaller brush here just lifted that off there just get rid of that redness there I'm not sure when this film will come out I'm trying to film as many as I can in case the inevitable happens and we go back into lockdown again I'm homeschooling and I'm going to find it hard to get these films out to you so I want to make sure I've got enough to entertain you right I love as you've seen recently the brow blade and again this is fantastic um, the ink is water repellent um, so when you do have a flush this is going to stay put and like I've said before, it's a really, really great design because you can still paint the little strokes even though the brush is upside down and that doesn't happen with all of these products around. So I really, really love this. My friend Zoe recommended this to me. My expert, I call her. My friend who's an expert, she loves beauty. And it's really nice to kind of get recommendations from friends as well because, you know, they're genuine products and it's really nice to know what people are looking for and searching for and you know don't know everything do we just pull this in here and again this is a really nice gentle finish to the brow and in combination with the benefit gimme brow you get a nice shape that looks really natural but also you know that it's going to last the wonder brow is also a really nice product as well for the brows that is um, waterproof that's the one that I reckon uh, recommended in my previous video so if you are in that situation you can flip back and have a look at that one I'll link that below as well if you want to go and have a look but I felt we needed a little bit of an update okay so I'm just going to let my eyes settle for a second and I'm going to go in with the blush she says looking backwards and forwards over her table going where's the blusher I had it out specially here it is Elizabeth Arden um, so this one is number three and it's called honey and I've chosen this colour and I know that you know that I love all these kind of neutral tones because I just think they look really classy and sophisticated but the reason that I've chosen this over a pinky or a berry or a coral is that again when you're flushing and flushing in your skin or you're feeling very hot your skin goes pink so what we need to do again is just kind of make sure we're throwing back those pinky tones as much as we can just by using something neutral. So you've neutralised your skin, maybe with a primer, green primer, and you put a yellow toned foundation on. Try and avoid using any pinky foundations if you have used that to kind of give your skin a bit of a lift. Try and go more yellow and use a colour very similar to this. And you want to just take it across your cheek. See, it's just got enough warmth to it making sure that you keep that nice light area around here with with um cream blushes I think it's almost it's just a little bit more tricky isn't it just to kind of keep it in place um, now you might find that the cream blusher doesn't last as long as a powder one maybe but I just feel much more confident recommending a cream blush to everybody because if you do perspire through this makeup and you do pat it down it will be fine and you won't see any kind of colour smudges on your face but if I was to recommend a powder I wouldn't necessarily feel confident that that powder wouldn't then connect with the sweat and just look a little bit murky and mucky on your complexion so I'd rather I recommend a cream blush that if you want to reapply afterwards um, you can and what I would do if I'd had a flush is I would just go in with a little bit of concealer around that front panel and blend in a little bit of blush just to kind of perfect my skin um, so I'm happy with that right the two eye products we're going to go into we're going to be using Goldstone by Bobbi Brown now, you know how much I love these pens um, because it's so much easier cream eyeshadows not a pen um, on your eyes because 
when your eyes get slightly more hooded what you want to do is push them back and it's kind of annoying to be fiddling around with lots of um, eyeshadows um, so this is such a lovely taupey shade this suits all skin tones all eye shapes you just follow the routine of going into your socket quite hard and then if I look straight down the camera what I need to do is push this part back I'm going to blend it with a brush but this classic shape for any eye is perfect do the other side now this does dry quickly which has its benefits but also just don't leave it too long otherwise you're going to end up with a hard edge make sure you really work the product into those lashes and it's got a lovely metallic finish to it but it's not sparkly so just make sure I get that outer corner of the eye where my skin tends to fold so I'm going to use a My Kitco brush and into that hard line and then just soften it out making sure that the line doesn't come further than there now I'm not going to take this underneath the eye um, I'm going to keep it just on top because sometimes you can get really watery eyes your eyes for litching I'm going to keep everything top and if you keep everything on the lid and just keep um, your mascara on the top lash only and not on the bottom lash it does give you a little bit of a lift and I think that kind of just gives you more of a, a wide awake look and if I'm feeling tired this is exactly how I do my makeup but if I want sort of a more sort of doughy eyed sort of maybe more sort of feminine prettier look then I'll go for mascara top and bottom but for this lift it's great now if you do perspire this will stay still it will stay put the colour will pretty much look exactly the same when you come home from work or your day out or wherever you've been it's really really great formula I'm going to go in with the Dior waterproof eyeliner which again is really really soft but really stays put in a pencil just keeping it nice and easy now what I need to do is to really pull my skin so that I can wedge a soft curl in between these lashes now as my eye goes down I stop so I'm almost just putting the liner on the top part the top ridge of my eye blending it in not too heavy not too thick but just making sure that pigment stays in between the lashes a little cotton bud and then I'm going to smudge these two together it really is as simple as that just kind of retract look back and then when you put the mascara on you'll get a really nice lift but because it's a coal it's not as thick as, and as dense as a gel or a liquid liner now listen the liquid liners are great and you can also really wedge the ink right into the roots of your lashes as it dribbles down just slightly whereas a coal will stay more on the lid um, but you know for an everyday kind of pulling yourself together this works really well and when you're wearing a metallic shadow on your eye lightens where you need it to lighten and it darkens where you need it to darken so this suits everybody just don't go too thick and the reason I say don't go too thick on the line is that if you've got slightly shorter lashes you want to see your lashes when you put your mascara on so if you've got shorter lashes curl your eyelashes unfortunately I don't need to curl my eyelashes um, so I never do but I've got line lash colors right here and I use them all the time at work and I sometimes heat them with a hairdryer very very gently and test them first and then bend them round okay so this eye makeup is not going to budge I'm not sure whether I've introduced you to this this is the hourglass unlocked mascara now I'm, you may have already watched the mascara one um, this has got sort of instant extensions in it so it's very different to caution where caution gives you full-on thick lashes straight away which you know I love whereas this one is what you call a tubing mascara so it's removed with warm water you don't need to use an oil to remove it the wonderful thing about tubing mascara is that it doesn't transfer and that's what we want so you can perspire and glow away knowing that your lashes are going to stay put it's a really nice brush very short um, uh, bristles um, they are molded plastic they're not actual thin thin bristles so because they're short what I find is that you don't get it all over your lid now with any mascara you've got to be patient you've got to get a nice coat on first right first coat 
then go to the other eye and then don't think about it because I always find that the magic happens when you put the second layer on and especially when this product contains fibres to elongate your lashes um, the fibres need to connect together so you get a decent application of mascara on the first application and then you go in with the second one there we go get much more of an instant lift now I always try and push my lashes up in the top always think about applying your mascara like you do blow drying your hair and then these guys come out towards your hairline so push them up in the center and then out on the outside of course I've managed to smudge that there very slightly but that's all right so you can see how that shadow sits really nicely it's just a lovely kind of pewtery color great take that makeup off my roll right okay so that's my eyes I feel that that is enough makeup I feel that I've lifted my eyes my brows are soft enough not overdone we're going with the lip now again it's all about color so I wouldn't really wear a red unless you find that your skin isn't red and you're not perspiring because I love a red but I'm just saying if your undertones of your skin through this period of your life are pink and red just put your red lipsticks to the side for a little bit because it just amplifies the redness in your skin just opt for a color that's a little bit neutralizing so we're going to go really simple we're going to use a lip cheat um, pillow talk by Charlotte Tilbury as a base and then we're going to use the Pericone no lipstick lipstick which I love um, you probably find as we age that the vermilion line of your lips starts to fade a little bit mine definitely has and actually a, a follower reminded me the other day about a, a comment that I made about filling your lips out she said oh remember you said lips with hips um, and what I mean by lips with hips is this I take the uh, pencil and I just give a little hip to my lip so I just round it slightly here and I just think visualizing you know a nice hip shape there helps you understand what I mean just pulls it out you don't really want to go over your lip line it's kind of quite old school and ugly I don't like it myself I'd rather connect here to your cupid's bow and then go around and just fill that out and that automatically gives you a much fuller lip shape this is a classic shade and even if you're going to go for a red or a fuchsia or whatever color this is nice because it just really marks out your natural lip shape always blend it in and always take the side of the lip liner so always sharpen your lip line as well so that when the lipstick wears off you've got a lovely base of color underneath you haven't got that skinny line so going in with Pericone no lipstick which is just a gorgeous no lipstick shade in fact I've got a couple of dupes of these that I've been finding recently but I always tend to go back to this because I just adore the texture um, but again if you are flushing this is just a nice neutral lip color that's complementary and it won't fight against anything else and of course there's no you know no rules in this I'm just sharing with you the products that I would use or I will be using um, when I go through that really frustrating time because obviously you know a lot of you are going to be working doing your thing and you don't want to be worrying about whether your makeup is smudging or whether you don't look as polished as you normally do just because you're feeling hormonal so I hope that helps you know I want to, I don't want to make it unsexy makeup in the menopause it's you know what we all go through but if we can just go through it with a little bit more confidence sort of feeling put together because you know some of the things when with the creamier products or the glossier products that you normally use wouldn't necessarily work and it's sometimes it's just really hard to find what would work so this is a nice concise edit most of these products I talked through 
um, in my John Lewis masterclass. This is not sponsored by John Lewis or anything. Um, I just wanted to share it with you and the topics that we went through. Um, I hope that helps. Again, any questions below, please ask. I'll do my very best to answer them. And um, I hope it's been helpful. Have a good week, guys, and I'll see you next Saturday.